Bangladesh hints at removing Islam as state religion. Wow. Um, well, we'll talk about it. What? Oh, okay. In the wake of, in Bangladesh, in the wake of anti-Hindu violence and the destruction and destruction that swept across, I can't talk today. Okay. Rewind. In the wake of anti-Hindu violence and destruction that swept across Bangladesh in October, the junior minister for information, uh, Murad Hassan, said he would speak to parliament to begin plans to revert to the 1972 constitution, referring to the nation's original firm secularism before the creation of constitutional amendments that marked Islam as the state religion. He added that Bangladesh would not become a haven for religious fundamentalists. This appears to be an attempt to address the continuing violent animosity between the country's Muslims and the Hindu minority. Hassan expressed his confidence that the parliament could pass the amendment with little opposition. The likelihood of this happening is, is another matter. Secular activists with an eye on Bangladesh remain highly skeptical of these measures being successfully passed amidst the current climate of rising Islamism. So um, you guys will probably remember, or if you're new here, um, we've been talking over the past few weeks about um, ex the, just a huge rash um, of violence against Hindus that exploded across the country in uh, October after the celebration of um, Durga Puja, a very important Hindu festival, where there was this photo that was circulated on social media of um, uh, a Quran being placed beneath, I've heard different gods, some say it was Hanuman, some say it was Ganesh, anyways, beneath a Hindu god. And then this image was spread like wildfire across social media. And then the um, Muslims went and attacked Hindu businesses. There were reports of um, uh, uh, gang RAPEs against uh, Hindu women and minors um it businesses being burned down homes being like it was just it, just insane insane levels of violence that caught international attention in a way that hasn't before um this kind of violence is known to happen um during durga puja um because you know it's like a very uh public display of the hinduism amidst a muslim minor a, a muslim majority um but this year it was on another level um with this social media post that is um, basically a fraud. It was fake and it was intended to incite this kind of violence. Um, because of how uh, shocking the the level of the, the violence and destruction was across the country, um, there's been calls um, uh, across high levels of um, the, the government to uh, unify the country um, and to protect and re-solidify the secular identity of Bangladesh. Um, now, there is the, technically there is the possibility of this going through parliament because um, the Awami League um, is, has this, like a super majority in the parliament. So like technically they would easily have enough votes to actually do it. Now, the reason why people are becoming skeptical is um, not technically because of the parliament's ability to pass something, but more like, can you actually do this in this kind of environment? Is it even safe for people to push for this kind of thing in this environment? Um, so you're saying not only they can suggest this, there's also enough legal support for it, but the consequences of it is is the level of outrage that they might not want to deal with that's like, that's my understanding in terms of the hmm. supermajority in parliament like that's what i or near supermajority that's what i was reading online and then wow. um in terms of the likelihood of this actually happening this is based on my conversations with people from bangladesh um, who are very familiar with this issue and hmm. um the environment the current environment um when i was reading so, when so i was bangladesh has sorry. bangladesh is kind of like the opposite of the united states when we're talking about the united states seems to be the government you know the institutions like the supreme court seems to be like behind 
uh, how progressive the people are. But Bangladesh right now seems to be having the opposite problem. It seems like the government is ahead of... Actually, I don't know how much support, like, these mob attacks, um, you know, these the danger that the Hindu community has to deal with, the intimidation, the threats, the violence. I can't imagine it's like the majority of Bangladesh supports that or no? Like... I don't think it supports like that, right? the violence. No, I mean, it supports like the anti and maybe not the violence, but the, at least the anti Hindu sentiment. Like, uh, okay, how much of Bangladesh do you think would like for their government to remove Islam as a state religion? How about it? let's do a milder version? Um, I, I can't responsibly give you a percentage based mm. on my own personal knowledge. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. What I think in terms of we're talking about this environment, there has been for many years an environment of rising Islamism. This is well documented. Um, right. In terms of, oh, how much would the general population support this or that? Um, that's something that I don't know personally. But I will say what you have to be concerned about is even if you know, actually, you know, like close to a majority would actually be like pretty fine with that. You have to worry about the fringe. Would... Actually, I don't know. Read, read the comments in the live chat. So Shuvo does. Ah, Shuvo is saying, if the parliament actually even speaks about it, it will be heavily criticized and there will be riots following the declaration. Um, I'm saying this based on past incidents when the government remotely tried to do anything relating to making Islam secondary. Um, the anti-Hindu sentiment is pretty well spread. Yes, that's well established. Um, mm. But what I was going to say is like, even if we're being, um, even if we're like, oh yeah, you know, like close to the majority, they're actually like, wouldn't be that big of a deal. You do have to worry about this fringe. When I was researching this, I learned that the um, prime minister, uh, Sheikha ha ha Hasima, um, she, there's been 19 assassination attempts on her. What the hell? 19? Yeah. 19. Jesus Christ. Wait, it, and, and yeah. Wait, what's her name again? Uh, Sheikha Hasima. Hasina. Sheikha. Let me actually, I wanted to say something, but let me confirm it. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't, she's very pro secularism, like based on what I've seen her speak, the way I, I saw her speak before. Yeah, but she was bringing up a good point is like there's a very big difference between having the par parliamentarian power to do something versus being beholden to the attitudes and reactions of the public. It's scary. Yes. In the early 2000s, there was um, uh, like a grenade attack on one of her protests that killed like 20 people or something like You know, I would not want to have her job. She oh is God. extremely brave to like imagine having 19 assassination attempts against you and then still pushing for like, yeah, we're gonna go and remove Islam as the state religion. Like, yeah, Shuvo's bringing up a good point that I was gonna bring up, but I couldn't remember the specifics. So thank you, Shuvo. Sheikh Sheikh Hasina's entire family was assassinated in 1975. Entire family. It was her and her sister who survived. Yeah. By the way, it's very interesting that um, she's the president, right? President or prime minister? President. Bangladesh has president. Well, when you have a parliament, don't you technically have oh, no, a prime minister? No, sorry, it's prime minister. Wait, first president. Okay, so which one is she? She's the daughter. Of, no, she's the daughter of Bangladesh first president, but she's the prime minister. Okay, okay, she's the prime minister. Um, but the fact that such an Islamic country has like a woman as the head of the country. It's surprising. It's amazing. When the I was like biggest... a little kid and I was learning about Bangladesh for the first time, I was like, hmm. they have a female leader before we do. <laughs> yeah. Before the United States. Oh, okay. So, so they D have is asking a question. D is asking, hmm. am I wrong? Or is the constitution secular? It was originally secular. And then going under two military regimes, there were constitutional amendments that made it increasingly Islamic. Um, there was a constitutional amendment in 1988 
that actually says that Islam is the state religion, but then says, oh, the other religions will be respected as well. And then the other constitutional amendments were to actually like integrate Islamic language into the constitution. Um, like, I think it might, let me look up my source so I don't, um, I'm not incorrect, but I think they might have integrated like some Bishmilahs into the, oh yeah, the fifth amendment to the Bangladesh constitution inserted in the name of Allah, the, bene the beneficent and the merciful at the beginning of the constitution. So that's the degree to which it, the constitution became Islamized, that they're starting <laughs> with in the name of Allah. Wow. See, guys, I tell you, like, what I tell, I, this is why you don't let them even come in a little bit. Okay. They just like, it's just in the name of Allah. We're not doing, no. When you open the door, when they get the foot in the door, all of a sudden tomorrow you wake up and your whole country has been Christianized or Islamized. Okay. You don't let religion even remotely, like, oh, it's just a cross above the judge. It's not harming anybody. Look at it. It's not harming anybody. Oh, we're just going to start with the prayer at the beginning, beginning of our meeting. Why? You are, are you hurt by words? Do our words of prayers, is it like, does it make you feel pain? Like, does it upset? It's just words. They're like, no, no, motherfuckers. This is religion and politics. You don't get to do that. We know where you're, because you're setting a precedent. Because once it's in, now the whole wall of secularism has fallen. Now, you could be, if you excuse that, you could build upon that because now the wall doesn't exist. And now you have excuses. You're like, why can't we have religion here? We have it over there. And now you have it in another place. And they're like, well, why can't we have religion over there? We have it here and there. So that's why you don't give them an inch. Actually, no, yeah, a centimeter. Let's, be, let's do metric. You don't give them a centimeter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just had to flex the supremacy of the metric system real quick. Yes, yes, exactly. I just I said it. I said inch on purpose just so I could flex on you after. <laughs> just so I could dunk on you, Americans. Uh, <laughs> um, All right. Yeah. So it'll be um, interesting. I want to. I want to keep more of an eye on uh, Bangladesh in general. You guys, uh, kind of mini announcement. We are going to be focusing a lot more attention on the subcontinent in general. So stay tuned for that. I think um, our audience is really interested in that area right now. And we're going to be dedicating a lot more time to that um, in the coming weeks. Um, and I'm excited to learn more about this part of the world and focus on it more because it is, I think, kind of neglected, especially in the area of um, uh, secular activism, um, or at least North American atheist activists don't talk about as much as I would like. Um, yeah. So if you guys have suggestions of what you want us to talk about in this part of the world, please add your new suggestions to our discord link is in the description. We have an entire channel called new suggestions. I check this. So this is your chance to give me direct feedback on what we should talk about. So if you're like, Hey, you missed this story. Like bring it to my attention. Join our Discord. Go check out that channel. I look mm. forward to your feedback. So when you are at our Discord, which is in the description, make sure you find a channel that is about new suggestion. That's where Susanna hangs out, right? So she will read your uh, su suggestions if you post it there. All right. So, guys, we, have, we give you so many ways for you. And also, if you want to – actually, another way is for you to give us your own experience, right? If you're in any – you know, by recording your audio – we have a link where we tell you to send us a voicemail and you record our audio and we turn your audio messages into a show. Um, we have a show called Atheist Republic Voicemails and it's just basically your voicemail. So if you're in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Afghanistan or anywhere in the world, you, it, it lets you, you don't have to add your name. So the name is optional if you want to be anonymous. Um, Egypt, United States, Canada, you could tell us your experiences or your views on different things. So record yourself and we'll, we'll use all our platforms. It turns into a podcast. We have a podcast and it goes, it, we post it on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook, and it gets released on our, as a podcast as well. So look for that as well. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. 
We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.